wonderful feeling. I'm so high, I swear I could fly. Me, oh my, I don't want to lose it. So what am I to do to keep the sky so blue? There must be someone who will buy. From an early age, I suppose I came to believe that it was okay to burst out into song. <laughs> Mr. McFeely sang a song every time he made a speedy delivery, and Mr. Rogers belted out one each time he changed his sweater or his shoes. <laughs> and mixed in with my Sesame Street and Muppet Show records as a child were my father's original Broadway recordings of Oliver, Hello Dolly, and My Fair Lady. Even the priests at church burst into song at various parts of the liturgy, and I wasn't sure why they did this, but they did. So you can see why I must have thought this was normal. What if we lived in a world where heightened emotion caused us to burst into song? What if we lived in a world where our melodic murmurings expressed our exuberant delight or our deepest distress? Well, besides bearing a striking resemblance to the television show, Glee, I dare say that such a world would be a different kind of place. I wonder if we could even take such a world seriously. The film Enchanted comes to mind, a film in which a Disney princess is plopped down in the middle of modern-day Manhattan. Life, at least at first, is not kind to Giselle as she tries to sing her way around the busy metropolis that is unwilling to see almost anything worthy of singing about. In fact, depictions of people bursting into song outside the proper context of Stephen Sondheim or Lerner and Lowe are often so comically juxtaposed against the realities of the world that we are almost always forced to observe such behavior as absurd. And absurd it sometimes is. And then there are also those moments when the soul can do nothing but sing in order to process or reveal the raw emotion that lies beneath. Magnifica anima mea dominum. And so after two weeks of the raspy repentance of John the Baptist, and after the first week of Advent, in which we heard the ominous admonitions of Jesus, we finally encounter the annual Advent companion whom we most look forward to. The protagonist most associated with the season of expectation, Mother Mary, meek and mild. Meek and mild, at least, is how we tend to remember her. Meek and mild, as she is depicted in so many Hallmark cards and figurines. Peaceful and contemplative, adorned in blue and waiting. Waiting like us for the miracle that is coming. And every year on the fourth Sunday of Advent, she is thrust upon the stage, reminding us in our celebration of the first coming of the Christ child, the one to whom we are pointed at Christmas, in the stable, with the turtle doves cooing, with the cattle lowing, with the shepherds abiding, and with the angels hovering. But there is a danger if this is the only Mary that we look to encounter each year. Yes, on Christmas Eve, it will be Mary that quietly ponders the miracle of all that has occurred in her heart. But this is not the only Mary we are given in Luke's Gospel, at least if we allow ourselves to look for her. Magnifica anima mea dominum. After receiving word from the angel of the Lord that she will conceive and bear a son who will be called the Son of the Most High, Mary hastens off to visit her cousin Elizabeth, whom, Mary is also told by the angel, will also bear a son in her old age. Into the Judean hill country she journeys by herself, young, alone, pregnant, and yet a virgin. Surely with each step swelling with curiosity about the Divine One quickening in her womb. Or was it all some sort of horrible practical joke? But then no. Immediately upon her encounter with her relative Elizabeth, 
the child in Elizabeth's womb, John the Baptist, yet once again, John leaps with interuterine acknowledgement of his cousin, whom he is coming to proclaim. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, breaks into song. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. To which, amongst all of this leaping and singing, amongst all of this Judean Rogers and Hammerstein breaking loose in a hillside hamlet, amongst all of this, and with the power of the good news growing within her, Mary's foot, too, must have gone attacking, and she, too, breaks into song. Magnificat anima mea dominum. Magnificat anima mea dominum. My soul magnifies the Lord. Ah, the absurdity of it all. 